Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm working on the Creative Arts Collaboration hashtag event Trash to Treasure 2017 and I'm going to make a very small teensy weensy mini journal. So all I've taken is to take this little box that I think had some indigestion relief tablets in it and all I'm doing is cutting the rough edges around the side and now have the basic journal shape. So just for ease I'm going to use my uh, jelly plate today but you don't need anything as elaborate as this just a paintbrush and some paints but this was really just for speed. So I've taken the insets from some of these boxes you know the the indigestion relief paracetamol that type of thing I keep all the little information leaflets that come from them and all I'm going to do is to spread some paint onto my jelly uh, plate and then I'm simply going to take those little insets and really just put some jelly printing on them. Nothing fancy, just some basic colour and you'll see there that the paint that's actually on the roller is being used for the back of them and when I lift the, them over you'll see the other side's been done. So this is just really a quick way to get some paint down and I'm not too concerned if there are still some white patches or if I can still see some of the print through it, that just all adds to the effect. So just using a kind of similar range of colours from them all but I do kind of mix it up a little bit and these are just basic acrylic paints or craft paints, nothing too fancy here. If you had anything left in an old bottle that you wanted to use up that would be the ideal type of thing for this sort of project. And really no matter the size of the journal they're all kind of made along the same design. Okay, you do get different designs, but you know, a basic journal, pretty much the same. So I had been going to cover this journal, but then I thought, no, uh, to make this quick and easy, I'm simply going to use the jelly plate again to do the cover. So that's me giving it its first coat, and I actually quite like the way those colours turned out. So once I'd done all the, the pieces of the insets, I had some uh, greaseproof paper, oh, I always stumble over that, greaseproof paper, uh, just some pieces that had been in between art pages, uh, just some bits left over, so I thought, well, I'll just jelly print them too. So then I'm doing the second coat on the cover, and you can see a nice bit of texture on there. So leaving that off to the side to dry. And then just doing more of that deli type paper to finish it off. So once that's done, I've left everything dry. And now I'm not doing any measuring with a ruler here. I'm simply looking at what would fit inside this teeny weeny mini journal. And looking at how I would then uh, make the page sizes. So just doing a rough bit of measuring to see how much I can get out of each piece. So just eyeballing all of that, faffing about a little bit with that first one till I get the size, but I'll get there. And then simply using the scissors to cut it. So as I say, no measuring and marking with pencils or anything, just very much eyeballing. Nothing fancy here at all, really keeping it simple and as straightforward as possible. And I'll actually show you two versions of this. So that's me got it. I've got two signatures. I think each signature had six sheets in it. And you'll see all I'm doing here is to take two elastic bands and almost attaching these signatures Midori style. And it's as simple and as straightforward as that. But I will show you how you can actually jazz it up a little. So that has to be the easiest make journal ever. And some nice colours on the pages there that can be added to later. And of course they could also be swapped out for other things. So what I'm going to do now is I shall take the elastic bands off and I'll show you how to jazz it up a bit. 
So all I'm doing is taking a needle and what I'm going to do is to sew the signatures in. Just really a very straightforward sewing in. And again, I'm not measuring anything. What I probably should have done is to, to punch the holes using the signature first, but I didn't do that. And sorry, I do go a bit off camera here. Uh, I just had to pull it in close to look. So there we go. I'm just punching through the signature and the actual journal cover. And I'll do the same with the other signature. Now I'm going to take some, I think it's embroidery thread, just a piece that I had left over, and I'm going to do a very, very, very basic sewing in of the signature. So I do it from the outside of the journal cover, through the signature, down to the bottom, through the signature, and out through the journal cover and then once I've straightened all my threads out I just tie that in a knot. I think I spent more time trying to tie this knot than I did anything else. This is always where I think I could do with a third hand, just to hold that down, but I got there. I got it tied, and then I put the other signature in, in exactly the same way, and left the threads at the back slightly wrong, long. Now, I'm also going to jazz it up a little bit. I did manage to, oh, sorry, there's my head in the way. I did manage to actually lift a couple of bits of paint because it stuck to some glue, but that's okay. The fact it was on a glossy cover, of course, means that it's more susceptible to, to lifting. I didn't sandpaper the outside of the uh, tablet box first, which I probably should have done, but I was doing it in a hurry, so that's okay. So just taking some washi tape to edge the journal cover. And I'm not doing anything on the inside. It was covered with the paint and I was quite happy with that. It was sticking down quite well. And now I'm just going to take some stays on with a very simple butterfly stamp and to stamp it back and front, just to give it a bit of detail, a bit of interest. And I'm going to take this decoupage uh, gloss, although it's not terribly glossy, and I'm just going to go over the whole cover. And I put a little bit on top of the knots as well, and that will just stop them from unravelling. There shouldn't be a problem with them, but it just helps. And it doesn't matter if it seals down the threads anyway, it just helps keep them in place. And that will just help protect that cover. So, what I then did was to attach a couple of beads to the outside, and now all I'm doing is taking some clear plastic stamps and just doing a quick bit of stamping through the journal. Just to give it a little bit of interest at this point, and obviously it's the sort of thing I could go back and add things to at any point. So I'm sorry, I've kind of gone off camera a bit there as well. And you see that where there was white bits on the papers, I just actually take some stamp and stamp over them. Now I spent very little time actually making this journal. It was very quick, very easy to make. And this would be the nice, a nice sort of little journal to do as a swap with someone or just to sit there as a nice bit of decoration along with other journals. So there it is. Got a few beads and a charm on it, decorated back and front and number of pages in it. So all in all, I was quite happy with it. So you'll see there it's about two inches, five centimetres by just slightly less than three inches or seven and a half centimetres. 
and just quite dinky overall. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you decide to make it, then please do feel free to share what you make with me in the Art and Soul Studio Facebook group that I co-chair with Diana from Artful Years with Diana. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.